So we're at pick 710 here in this uh, mock draft we got where we've been picking out of the 10 spot. Um, so we have our choice here. Will Fuller still on the board, which we passed him up in the last go round. Um, Bobby Woods fell off the board, so we don't get a chance at him, as did Sterling Shepard. So we don't have a chance at him either. Um, so right here, I think this is a chance to you have to go down the list a little bit here, but he's not necessarily a guy who sits around. He's just a little further down on the list. I think we when when we saw his name on there, we all wanted a little piece of Larry Fitz here at seven ten and just make us feel super comfortable about our second receiver since we just missed on Bobby Woods. This guy comes in and gives us, you know, wide receiver one pretty much potential and I'm not gonna say guaranteed, but you know, in wide in the fifteen, sixteen, and seventeen, he was wide receiver one. Obviously you lose Carson Palmer. But you would like to think that Larry Fitzgerald is going to be somewhere in that wide receiver one conversation at the end of the year. And we just got him at, as our second receiver right. in the draft at pick 710. So that, you know, maybe yeah. it's only a one year rental, but whatever. I'll take stabs at the end of this thing with some youth sure. and, and get my guy here and, and help me win as many games as I can this year. Well, I think. I mean, I can count seven or eight wide receivers, you know, maybe from Devontae Adams and back towards the top that I that I would rather have than Larry Fitzgerald on a one year. I mean, not even maybe rather than one year. Like you said, three straight wide receiver one seasons. And as far as a guaranteed wide receiver one, he's he's guaranteed given health between that sixth receiver to 12. Like that's the cutoff. If you're a wide receiver one, you're in top 12. Like there's no chance he's not if he's healthy. Like, I mean, I don't think so. I don't think so. I like really and truthfully, like I don't can't guarantee anything, but he's about as as good as money in the bank. As much of a guaranteed as anybody outside the top five or six players, Julio and moving forward, Keenan Allen, AJ Green, you know, like there wouldn't be surprised me at all if Larry Fitzgerald outscored AJ Green again. You mm-hmm. know, because he's only done it a couple seasons in a row now. Right. So like it wouldn't surprise me. Obviously, AJ Green got hurt. But like so Larry Fitzgerald for me. He's our second wide receiver off the board. To me, I mean, I, yeah, one year I think Larry Fitzgerald out for outscores Marvin Jones. Like that's the that's the key here. And like he comes in it, as our second receiver, but bumps up to probably our exactly. first actual. You know, slot him up. I would I would love to have seen Marvin Jones, Robert Woods, and even Larry Fitzgerald in a row. Bang, that's bang, what I was bang. about to ask. If we yeah. took Robert Woods, do you guys still want to take Larry Fitzgerald here, or there is a slew of running backs left, which makes me want to take Larry even more because there is Tevin right. Coleman left. There's Alex Collins left. There's Lamar Miller. There's Carry On. There's a Jai. Right, and that's five, and we pick in five more spot, like four mm-hmm. more picks go off the board after this, so. I'm totally with, you know, let's let's not take one of those backs here because I want to take a back, but, I mean, let's just wait. Let's definitely grab Larry Fitz. Even if we had grabbed Robert Woods, I'd still be fine grabbing Larry Fitz here because I know we're going to get a running back. One of those five you just mentioned, probably one of those four. Don't necessarily want a Jai, but I would take any of those other four guys <laughs> for sure. Um, <laughs> Quick jab. And, and be happy with it at, at, at the eighth pick. So totally fine with grabbing Larry here, even if it's for a one-year rental. You know, like you said, we're going to stack up some wide receivers later on in this draft to make sure we get somebody that's going to bust out of that pack and, and be someone that can produce for us. And maybe we should have taken Bobby Woods in the last round. But either way, Larry Fitz can't miss here. He's a good insurance. He's a good insurance policy. And we've done and nothing based but youth on, up to this based point. Based on so. what we've done above us, above Larry Fitzgerald, six, you know, six and up, Larry Fitzgerald's a good anchor to be to ground what we've already been doing. Is and just, He's and an ultimate veteran. Our guys are young. We need a good coach in there to get them right, get right, them there, get their mind right. Good team guy. But like you, so when we took Kenyon Drake at six three, like we weren't sure. Like Jay Wayne just said, now we got now we're here at seven ten, and we got four more picks before. Now we can say, all right, let's make sure we get Larry and whatever running back we have left. We can we feel comfortable. There's like five of them we like. But when we took that pick at six ten, when we took Drake, yeah, we can look back on it hindsight, being like, well, maybe we should have taken Robert Woods because when we got back to seven ten, there were still plenty of good running backs. That's the thing, right? Like, there, right. Was a, there was a quarterback run. There was a big gap in between our picks, and it easily could have been a yes. Well, that's kind of and what so, I was getting at when I was talking about Bobby Woods or yes. Drake, is that yep. it could have 
easily been that running back run that went, but instead it was a quarterback exactly, receiver run. Exactly. And that's that's the key here is like it's so to me, I would much prefer to be on one of the ends so I could have this to, it does suck when it's going out the other way and it's gonna yeah, take six like, damn it. Damn it. Yeah, I that guy. It sucks when there's sixteen players going off the board before you get back. But it's fantastic when you get a pick and four more picks you get one. So like you can basically kind of corner a market on a player. So like right now we're looking here at seven ten and just like Jay said, like let's take Larry because we want Larry on our team to ground that wide receiver position for us for the next year or two. And then and when we come back around at eight three, we got our pick of a it doesn't matter who goes off the board, there's gonna be plenty of players we like. So like that's that's kind of the fun of being at the end of a round. I also just want to throw this in there for fear of starting a whole new two nor conversations, but I wouldn't be upset if you wanted to grab a guy like Marquis Lee or Will Fuller over Larry Fitz because of the age thing. If you wanted to if that's something you wanted to do, I can't really argue too much with you about that. We're weak at wide receiver and we need some wide receiver points and and Larry Fitz is going to give us the most this year. But if you wanted to go with cuz Lee and and Fuller are going to come off the board here soon, and I wouldn't mind getting a piece of either one of those two guys. That's fair enough. I'm, I'm, I like my my, my man Larry here. Just with <laughs> I, I, knowing, I'm a sick Larry. With uh, knowing that I'm probably pretty sure, almost guaranteed that he's going to be in that top twelve of receivers at the end of the year. Yeah, right? and he's. I mean, he's already said I could play a few more years. Like it's not. There's no. There's no drop off physically. Sure, he's not burning right. it like he used to as far as a pure speed factor. But he's he's. You don't have Carson anymore, and it's a little bit of a concern. But then, you know, you have Bradford, who will come in there, and, and he can get it done, and he's certainly going to pump it to the guy in the slot being Larry Fitzgerald. And then I watched an interview with Patrick Peterson the other day on the Rich Eisen Show, and he was talking about how it was so ridiculous. what jo- He's never seen another rookie like Josh Rosen just come in and have complete control of everything. He was coming in making checks at rookie mini- minicamp. He knew everything where it's supposed to be, how it's supposed to be done. He's just... He it blew his mind that this guy was so smart and the throws are where they need to be. They're on time and he's he's checking plays already. Like he's Patrick Peterson. I mean, obviously it's his guy. They just drafted a quarterback, right, but right, he, doesn't, right, he right. doesn't have to come out and say right. any of that. He could just say, yeah, you know, we got the, the young guy and hopefully he can learn from Sam Bradford. But, it, you know, he and came that out lines and, up that his his remarks lines up. And that's what you want to see, especially as a Cardinals fan or a Cardinals player or a vet, aging veteran, like a ho- first ballot Hall of Famer like Larry Fitzgerald, like pre-draft process. It was like, you know, Rosen's the most cerebral. He's going to be, you know, the most coachable. And uh, but, you know, whether and it's he pers- loves that middle of the field sure. efficiency, which right, is great right. for Larry. And that's I, I'm glad that you just said all that, because on the tip of my tongue, I was about to say if Larry Fitzgerald sees anything promising out of Rosen, which which obviously Patrick Peterson says he's already seen it. If this season looks promising out of Rosen, Fitzgerald's coming back. You could get another Larry season. You could get another Larry season. He's like, so damn good. And he, I, I was caught a clip on the top 100s, and then Larry Fitz was in there. I don't you watch that, but I just happened to be on, and they were just talking about how Larry – Man, Larry could play for a couple. He's been, he's so good still. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's what I'm saying. So this this move for the for the Cardinals bringing in Rosen and if he's if he continues on this course that to become that franchise you know stabilizing quarterback for them, who who says Larry couldn't give you another year or two? So I, I feel good about the Larry pick, pick. But going on what Jay said, like a Will Fuller, what he did with Deshaun, even if it that has you know what was it, six touchdowns in five games or something stupid like that out of Will Fuller? Like, even if he breaks off of that just a little bit, that's still fantastic. And Marquise Lee, super, still super young, a producer in this league. You know, the Fuller number... got rid of the yips. The number, the number one in Jacksonville, but not really like one of those guys, like between some of the other speed that they got on the field and the way they pound it, like... Mar- Marquise Lee is not one of those kind of guys where it's like, all right, well, he's getting shattered by this cornerback and he's taken out of the game. He works on crossing routes, mm-hmm. you know, like Marquise Lee's still going to get his. It's just the gap, the points per game, every single week gap that Larry Fitzgerald's going to give you probably over any receiver still on the board outside of some, you know, that guy that's just, you know, turns out to be awesome, which might be Will Fuller. And it could be potentially, you know, I was at this point, I was even been like, you know, maybe Jamison Crowder is Alex Smith's boy this year. Mm-hmm. And he, he's getting eight catches a game, you know, but like Larry, Larry Fitzgerald, you know he's getting the volume, and he may be there for more than just one year. So I feel good about this pick, but I I agree with what Jay said. All right, so four picks go off the board. We're picking again at 8-3. Will Fuller's still available. Maybe we should have snagged him here, but we end up passing on receivers because we have to, 
And as we said multiple times, there's a bunch of guys at the bottom of this next kind of grouping down or even like grouping at a half down that we like a lot of these uh, other receivers in the double digit rounds coming up here. And we're just going to stack those up. Um, now, maybe we should have taken Will Fuller here. Wouldn't have been a bad play. I really wouldn't have been that upset about it. But we were talking about these backs. And now we kind of have our choice of these same backs that we were talking about because the list, I think Ajay went. Is right. It? Ajay went. Thank goodness. Right. So we didn't and have so to have that to- discussion. <laughs> And we're still left with the pick of the litter. Right. But now, I mean, after we make this pick, there's going to be a lot of spots drop off. Like, we're, you know, another 16 picks go right. off the board. Right. So we need to get, uh, you know, in my opinion, we need to get one of those guys that, that we like, whoever yeah. we like the most. Let's We have our pick. So there's a big group of running backs left. It's Collins. It's Lamar. It's Tevin Coleman. It's Carrion. It's Deion Lewis, Cohen, all the Mac, all those kind of guys are left. I'm thinking that we'll we'll see at least one of those guys on our next pick at nine ten. Somebody will be hanging around, um, but here we we again we get the pick of the litter here. We got two receivers. We feel comfortable with those guys. We feel extremely comfortable with those guys. Um, so basically, Tevin Coleman's on the list, and we feel that there's it's just too much value in Coleman right now to pass up on him. Right. And if you if you ask looked at any of our rankings, I'm sure Tevin Coleman is up above all those other dudes that we've have listed. Yeah, leaps and bounds, I think. Like well, that's kind of what it came down to. Well, we we were talking about I, I, obviously Carry on Johnson's on that list and we all love Carry on Johnson here and we were talking about these players. Carry on Johnson, Alex Collins, Lamar Miller, Tevin Coleman, like knowing what we know today. We don't know if Donta Foreman's ankles. We don't know if he's going to start the year on the pup. So we don't know if Lamar Miller is going to get the first six weeks to reclaim that backfield and you know be that back end RB one. Uh, we don't know if between you know Buck Allen and um, Kenneth Dixon, Kenneth Dixon, or for the Ravens, is going to hold back Alex Collins. If we don't know if Kenneth Dixon coming back into the fold, we don't know if that today means that Alex Collins doesn't get the stranglehold on the job like he had at the end of the year. We don't know that Deion Lewis is going to do quite as much as, as he could. The upside on Deion Lewis in Tennessee is amazing, but we don't know exactly what that upside is until we see it. And so the, knowing what we know today, we know that Tevin Coleman has been a really solid RB2 to this point in his career. Mm-hmm. If we need him, we, we can start him. We know that we could start him in our RB2 spot if we need him. Even but with would, a healthy Freeman. We could flex him. In a pinch, we, we could flex him. We could, in a pin, we, it would take a big pinch for us to need him as an RB2 because we already got four of our, our running backs in front of him and three of them are going to be solid. And by the time we're done with this draft, we're going to have two of them completely solidly backed up in Dalvin <laughs> Cook and Jerry McKinnon. You know, So like that's the, we don't need Tevin Coleman. But knowing what we know today... With Freeman healthy, Tevin Coleman's a really good RB two. This is a bit if, of a luxury pick it, here. Absolutely, I was about to get. That's true. It's a very, it's a big time luxury pick. Mm. If, if Freeman goes down, Tevin Coleman's an RB one. Right. And this time next year, Tevin Coleman is the leading candidate to become Jarek McKinnon. Right. In free agency, and it may slash, even go over to the 49ers if they get rid of him. So we're just <laughs> covering our bases here. Right. Right. Well said, Jay Wayne. And if that does happen. If it obviously, if the 49ers thing happened with Tevin Coleman, it would just be oh ridiculous. <laughs> but if Tevin Coleman goes to some team that really needs a running back, like McKinnon got into the position this year, he would be moving forward with a lot more value than McKinnon was moving forward with. The McKinnon spike was ridiculous because he's, you know, Kyle Shanahan's hand picked guy. But Tevin Coleman has never been really below the eighth round since he's been right. a rookie in a startup. And Tevin Coleman, I mean, Jarek McKinnon a year ago was in the 200s. Yeah. You know, he fell off the face of the earth. Exactly. Like Tevin Coleman is a proven asset already. But this team loaded with running backs, we don't need him. It's a luxury pick, like Jay says. He really shouldn't even him. be here, right? We, right. We don't think he necessarily should be even be on the board at this point. So we're it's a luxury pick. We're going to take him if something happens to Freeman. He's awesome. If nothing happens to Freeman, he's an RB two. And if he goes to another team as their chosen one in free agency next year, he's a huge spike. Yeah. So it's a it's a good spot for us to be in. That's what I got. I got all the same things as well. The McKinnon effect is the biggest factor for me. Um, and and obviously you've seen this guy be a, be a very productive running back with and without Freeman. Yeah. So I I love all that and I, this is a luxury pick. This is, he's not a guy that I want to put on my team in some of those other picks I kind of wanted him there but I didn't love the structure of our team enough right, to right. be able to say I'm going to put Tevin Coleman on my team because I still needed another running back that I feel comfortable starting for sure yes. every single week. But then, like you guys said, there's he's going to be a free agent after next year. People loved this guy 
a season ago, and it yes. just just again, all the love has kind of subsided a little bit. Twenty sixteen Falcons, of town. right? Twenty sixteen Falcons efficiency. So the value can only go up from here, in my opinion. It's never really dipped too far, and it can only go up. Completely agree. And here's the thing about the Tevin Coleman and free agency: is people, what else would the Falcons say other than we want to keep him? Right? Why would they be like we're not keeping him? But you don't pay like they just paid Freeman, so you're not going to pay. Coleman in this NFL. No, you just you're drafted not going to Smith, who right. hopefully you're, could be your replacement. So, like, yeah, you just got to read between the lines. Like, the Falcons are not going to tell everybody, hey, we're going to ship Freeman. You know, Coleman's walking next year and or we trade him into, you know what I mean? Like, why wouldn't they say for anything other than team morale and and player morale, like, yeah, we love Tevin Coleman. Yeah. We're keeping him. We're going we're gonna to try to pay him. They're not going to pay him, but they're not going to say that. Right. Yeah, I don't He's think He's definitely can, hitting the streets. They're paying Devontae. You can't pay two running backs. So yeah. Just, not gonna work so i like putting this guy on our team as kind of a basically it's almost a next year play for the most part unless something happens to freeman we have leverage on the freeman owner if, if we want to make a move in that part of the season we can trade him to him or we can just reap the benefits of freeman going down and or we hit some injuries and we're using him every freaking week this is true because he is very startable in that flex position if you need him he's always been good for you know eight Plenty ten points team. yeah yeah um and i i, th- I think this is just again the McKinnon effect of next year of just how much value he could be he could be a third round pick next year Get, second round pick exactly well and we talked about him he was in the discussion when we talked about Drake but like you said Drake's got a lot clearer role clearer spot in front of him this year to be uh you know every week starter like RB1 potential guy but like Devin Coleman in the eighth round he's like scratching off, he's like a lottery ticket where the first number you scratch off you get your money back mm-hmm. and you're like oh man mm. I got I got 18 more chances here yeah I, like I'll you know I'm, I'm about to make some money here or at least break even like there's right. no chance that Tevin Kevin Coleman at 8-3 is not a, a break-even scenario. Yeah. But in this instance, you don't even have to go to the gas station and wait in the line <laughs> to get your money back. You just are, it's there. You yeah. already got it. That's the worst it's part the of bank. buying lottery tickets is having to go get your money. <laughs> you need to start a mobile app. I'm always like... Lottery ticket recovery. Oh, I love it. Ooh, a snap idea. a picture, but Venmo. They, not unless you could mobile app purchase more. That's when You got to go back. Yeah, they don't want to <laughs> yeah. give you the money. That's right. Every time I, I redeem a lottery ticket, they're like, well, you want another one? You want the cash? Like they say, it like it's a bad thing to cash out. You want the cash? Yeah. You want more lottery tickets? Or do you want a chance to win $20 million? <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. man. Will the, short, will the court be willing to grant me a short bathroom break? Yes. <laughs> Can it wait? <laughs> yes, it can. All right, we'll be right back with more Married to the Game. All right, we're back. Hit us up on the Twitter at the FF Dynasty if you feel so inclined. We have individual handles Dynasty Big Co., IMC Myers, Jay Wayne's World. Put little ats in front of all those, they'll do you just right. We try to try to do a good job of interacting with uh, whoever hit, wants to hit us up. You got any questions? Feel free. Let's keep going with this mock draft. Doing it from the 10 spot. Where are we at, Case? We are currently at 9-10. Uh, or is it? No, yeah, 9-10. No, 8-3 nine, 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 is what we just yep. picked with Tevin Coleman at 8-3. We just snagged him. Um, so we're back up at 9-10 here. And the run of running backs finally happened, like we kind of said it would in this big gap between these picks. Well, we took the, our guy first. We took Tevin. and then the, We took Tevin Coleman. And then Alex Collins, carry on, Mack, Cohen, Lewis, all fall off the board, leaving the... Running back cupboard, pretty dry. But there's still Lamar Miller. There's still a couple guys hanging around, which, you know, this is why we load up on running back, so we don't have really have to do this. But then Lamar Miller was just kind of sitting there. The only other option at running back really left was Chris Thompson. Um, and we all wanted to take the shot on Lamar Miller over Chris Thompson. I, I, any of you guys wanted to take Thompson over? Mm. Oh, my bad. I wasn't even looking at Thompson. <laughs> never, never, never was a chance. My my only other chance was to be like, hey, maybe we take a shot on Ty Montgomery. Yeah, but what and what well, happens to that situation? To me, Lamar Miller in the ninth is a quick quickest draft uh, button press as as Devontae Freeman in the third is. Yeah, I mean Chris Thompson. To be fair, was you know I think if you're if you're one of these Alvin Kamara lovers, you have to love what Chris Thompson's doing because he's. It's kind of similar to what Alvin Kamara was doing, except he's getting a little less volume in the gut. But, I mean, it's not like Kamara's getting a ton of volume in the gut either, but he's been doing ridiculous things in the passing game. I, I, Very similar to Alvin com- Kamara, except it's way cheaper. Well, I completely agree with what he was doing while he was on the field. And there's no – take nothing away from how good Chris Thompson looked the first couple of weeks of the season before he got hurt. But – 
the stability factor of what the Saints' production has been out of the backfield mm-hmm. versus what the Redskins have done. Well, I mean, I this is nine rounds later. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. But I don't think comparing the Redskins' past backfield production and you know but what you when think, you put the numbers next to each other, their production's fairly similar. Chris Thompson was crushing last year, no doubt about it. I just like we've talked about Chris Thompson and long term on your team, like buy and hold. Yeah. Like I don't think. Chris I mean, Thompson, if I'm buying Chris Thompson right now, I'm buying him because I'm selling him as soon as he starts getting back on the field and doing right. what he was We've doing anywhere this near. Game. We bought him real cheap last off season. Yeah. And then we told you to sell him in the midst of his ridiculously crushing run. And then because he got hurt, which is what he basically right. likes to do a lot. It's which exactly why we were saying sell him when he was crushing. But, right. like, but no, there was nobody on the, nobody was talking about Chris Thompson last year like Casey was. So let me not, but let me agree with Jay Wayne here at nine ten, Lamar Miller is the fastest except we had all Oh, Boom. Since, the, since, since the first and second picks, da- yeah. Saquon and Dalvin, even Dalvin, there was some discussion on Leonard Fournette and Kareem Hunt. Like at 9 10, Lamar Miller, it, it was a quick except for us. And it's just because we don't, we, we already said this, we didn't need Kenyon Drake in the sixth. We definitely didn't need Tevin Coleman in the eighth. And here's what I love about this it's like six picks out of our first nine are running backs, which sounds ridiculous. Mm-mm. But like we're not chasing, Shouldn't. we're not chasing wide receivers here. Like, we took Tevin in a conscious decision. We passed on Will Fuller and Jamison Crowder. We did. But the, what's, we're about to take six out of the, We got one more pick coming. I don't want to spoil it. But then, spoiler alert, we go six out of seven rounds wide receivers. receivers. We take six out of seven players back to back to back to back to back wide receivers. And like Casey said earlier, the double-digit rounds, we just cover a ton of ground in the wide receiver department we're going to tell you about that coming up but i don't want you listening to this and being like six running backs i don't even know how you even make a team after that first like, off this team is you don't have to start three wide receivers in this league because that's a dumb rule if that's how your league set up like what kind of communist league right dictates who you can put in that third flex spot or second <laughs> flex spot so this is basically drafting upon two running backs two receivers and two flexes, and two flexes. Right. right right so that i let the mar miller was an easy pick for us knowing that we just continue to see this wide receiver list that we could just pluck pluck production off of and so yeah i mean i'm completely happy with that pick i have no hindsight 2020 regret about that pick at all yeah no me neither i mean i think i love lamar miller we were giving lamar miller love all all off season last year and loving him while people were hating him and it seems like his adp was going up some and there's maybe a little bit more lamar love kind of circling around right now especially with maybe foreman Possibly Pup-linger. maybe pupping to begin the uh, season here. Uh, as we were going on in this draft, some of the staples that we like to take as receivers fell off a little bit. Like you said, the Crowder fell off. The Emmanuel Sanders fell off. The Marquise Lee fell off. So that's a bit of a bummer to not be able in this next pick to get one of those guys because we'll, those would be guys that we would kind of be targeting at this point in the draft. So they went off the board um, after we took the Lamar Miller pick here, I believe. Sure, but it, you know, like in a twelve man. But league, I love taking the Lamar Miller. This is great. You get a fantastic player who's on a great offense, and I I think he was good last year. I don't think Dante Foreman did anything to prove that he that Lamar Miller still shouldn't be a part of this, a heavy part of this offense. No doubt, and I mean, obviously, you've probably seen the splits or at least heard about the splits of how much better the running game was when Deshaun Watson was in there. So you're taking a shot at the not only Lamar Miller, but you're taking a shot at the Houston backfield here. Mm. And this is at nine ten, so we know there's only four more spots to fall off before we get to the next pick but the thing about the wide receivers like casey just mentioned some fell off so it's like all right well do we we're we're not we're not going to chase wide receiver here and pick somebody that may or may not be worthy of a starting spot every single week in our wide receiver position we did joke that at this point we would be looking at randall cobb but he's already in a walking boot already you know like if randall cobb wasn't in walking boot we might probably would probably would have taken randall cobb here but without that we you know with randall cobb in a walking boot you take a starting running back on a high octane offense, mm. you know, and and add a, add him again to the list here of running backs that we don't need. We're basically taking him away from another a, a, a RB zero type start yeah. from another team. You're taking him away from a team that could use him right. and making them call you in the third fourth week of the season when they need a running back. Because as you'll see in the next coming picks, we're our wide receivers in this team are just fine. Yeah, we got. You know, we got a team. Casey and I have a team in the FFPC where our we we got Larry Fitzgerald and Marquise Lee, and that's it. But our Chris running Hogan. backs, 
We got Chris Hogan. Our running backs are so good. We won the championship. And it's this one of those deals where we have Freeman as our Freeman, is, Freeman our is our third, third best running, running back. back, and we we beat everybody up. And then this this team right here, the way we've drafted this, the wide receivers that we have on this team right here are even better than that team when we finish up. All right, so we just took Lamar Miller at nine ten. We got another five spots up till we draft again at ten three, and our handcuff the cuff. Dante Foreman is sitting there, and we take Dante Foreman. Yeah. Spoils just come right out with well, it. Well, we're in a little bit of a no man's land here on the board. Like I said, some of those receivers we like to stab at a little later are all all fell off on us. And we know we're getting primed and ready to make a run on a bunch of receivers kind of going forward here. So I mean we and, just and got we were Lamar. talking about we we brought Randall Cobb up here. Right. But the walking boot thing already in right. it is just like, oh damn we it. We just bought Lamar Miller. We felt like we stole him. And yes, then right. we're sitting here looking at his backup and we got the the package deal right, right here that we can we can lock up and make sure Texas we got backfield. we got the whole parts and pieces of it which again we missed on Bobby Woods and we got Drake but whatever like this is somebody's, why. right you can I can go get a Bobby we can Woods go get Bobby Woods with, with one of these running back trades well this is why when we took when we we sounded really like we you know the hindsight 2020 stuff when we took Drake instead of Robert Woods and we said later on in the draft who was there for us to take in the running back position like I that's why we we're like oh well I mean if Drake hits then that's ridiculous for our team we would feel a lot better right now going into the season with the three in a row, Marvin Jones, Robert Woods, Larry Fitzgerald, and now we're completely okay. But when we took Drake there, we had no intentions of not being hammering wide receivers at this point in a draft. But at 9-10, when Lamar Miller's sitting there, we had to take him. And then that we had the luxury pick at Tevin Coleman. He came back around. Lamar Miller's on the board. We had to take him. And we were like, there's no chance we're not looking wide receiver. But then all of a sudden, Dante Foreman stares us in, staring us in the face, and we all just kind of – I think maybe Jay Wayne might have said it. Maybe. I don't know. Somebody said, hey, there's Dante Foreman. We could take him back to back. And then we all looked at each other and just started laughing. It's like, what a what a move. What a slick move that is to take them both. And, and again, ninth, it takes them off somebody else's team who would be looking it, to get a running back here who maybe only has two throughout this process. Dude, this time, this time three months ago, when before when it was really talked before, like Dante Foreman and Pup List really became a thing. Right. Like Dante Foreman was hot, real you hot. Know, he People was love him. So they love to hate Lamar Miller, and they love to get to put Dante Foreman as the best thing ever. Hate Lamar. They exactly. They hate, they hate Lamar, and Dante Foreman was hot. But now we're like, oh well, maybe Dante Foreman starts on the pup, and Lamar Miller. If you look at what he did with Deshaun Watson, he was actually really, really good. So all right, so we got them both. Right. And now we move forward. It's like we don't even have to, you know, we don't even have to worry about running backs. Number here. one, we don't have to worry about them, and number two, there isn't really too many other guys left on the list that I want to even look at, look right. at, and worry about. Because after the top thirty running backs go off the board, it is like a barren wasteland. Yeah, right and there. we got a ton of them. Yeah, we got a bunch of them, and like I mean, sure, you can come through here and take some some Rex Burkhead type guys and some Kenneth Dixon's and some of those other guys along the way there, yeah, and good try luck to, to figure try to out pick, when to start them. Exactly, you're just putting them on the back of your bench. You we got guys that we're okay with starting every single week six of them yeah. right. and with a handcuff and then we ended headaches. up getting like you said we get the dalvin cook handcuff a little later and you can get brita and you know we could secure all of our assets pretty sure. easily and you could trade for a receiver yeah we missed on bobby woods but the reason that me and big co are okay with not drafting wide receivers is because you can like we said you can win with uh larry fitz and lee and hogan being your receivers with eat like we beat everybody pretty easily last year with that situation we picked up robert woods off the waiver wire last year mm -hmm. drafted him in super late and crushed it for us and then coming into this year we were packed to the gills with guys in ffpc and you have to make cuts so we were able to we traded bobby woods for a first round pick which then led to us trading for zeke we used one of those first round picks in a zeke trade yep like this is why we're okay with just waiting and hammering all of these uh receivers in the back end of this thing and there's still going to be receivers on the waiver wire that i probably want to pick up like we got Devonte adams in the 17th round of an ff startup two years ago two years ago mm -hmm. he's on our team right now just anchoring that thing yeah exactly so yeah and so that's at 10 3 we take don to foreman to seal up the package and then so and then we that's what i was saying just a minute ago so now six out of the next seven picks are wide receivers we're about to hammer it home and we're going to tell you we're going to walk you through it and tell you why but that's you know, Lamar Miller and, and Dante Foreman basically 
go back to back with Tevin Coleman as luxury. We just got three straight luxury picks. And sure, there's going to be a player who got taken, a player or two who got taken while we were drafting those running backs. We're like, well, we wish we would have had that guy, but you don't know who it is right now. Right. You know, like I'm saying, Jamison Crowder could be an absolute stud. Yeah. But he was supposed to be a stud last year and it didn't happen, but one game, you know? Yeah. I mean, yet, I want the Crowder. I want shares, the Crowder but. too, but, that, you know, that's, I want the Crowder. I want Will Fuller, you know, it's just, but is Will Fuller going to come back and even be 75% of what he was for a couple? couple weeks with Deshaun you just don't know so we kept hammering these backs and now the next six out of seven are wide receivers and I like where we, where we end up yeah well, yeah I love this little turn we just hit Lamar Miller four picks later grab his back up and now there's a bunch of picks that are going to go off the board before we get to pick again let's go ahead and take a quick break and we'll be back and uh, get into some of these wide receivers that we actually finally did take because we are going to draft a wide receiver we promise is coming <laughs> we'll be back for your pleasure Welcome back. We're at we're in round eleven, pick ten on this uh, startup mock that we got going on here. Brought to you on uh, Fantasy Pros platform of Draft Simulator, which is a solid uh, machine that they've built over there. Hats off to those guys. Yeah, Pretty strong. Solid. It's not perfect. There are some players in here that wouldn't. Pro- you know, Demarco Murray went pretty soon here after we just took Dante Foreman that's probably not going to happen there's there's a couple off things they don't account for like the Hunter Henry injury and all that but I mean overall it's a really great tool that's optimized and to, to be random and, and it's a yeah, lot of fun and to, she, you can't no figure it out really. right. no, well to take up yeah you can't figure it out which is really cool because in past past draft simulators have been you do one or two and you figure out how the picks are going to fall so then you start scheming against what you know mm-hmm. is going to happen and that's not really cool that doesn't help right. but I will say like you said the the um the running back that just went that you just said DeMarco Murray. DeMarco Murray like in a real draft man that happens too and you're like I can't believe that happened you know like there's th- in a real draft there's picks that go off and you're like I can't that, what is was he asleep yeah. was that a misclick it's you know true. so there's things I, I I think this tool is as good I, there's nothing better out there for this type of for this type of practice for sure all right so a pick around 11 pick 10 we're going to start our wide receiver uh hammering mm-hmm. <laughs> So Drop we, we lead we lead off with Cam Meredith as our as our lead off receiver in our marathon of receiver grabbing here. Right. And when we took when we were look like this is like this is eleven ten, so four picks are gonna go and then we're on the clock again. And we we were talking about how to get the best wide receiver production for our team to help us win because we love where our team's at right now, but obviously we're in the eleventh round and we only got two wide receivers, so we need to make some hay real quick. And we were like, Well, how do you make hay? The quick <laughs> You gotta grow know. it. Oh, you gotta, yeah. You gotta need. So you some, gotta go. a lot of pitchforking involved. Sun and water. Yeah, uh, you need that. <laughs> um, but we were like, Julian Edelman is the quickest route to guaranteed wide production. receiver production. Yeah. Right. But he's suspended, and so we were like, I don't think we need. We want Julian Edelman in these two picks, but I think we can take another player first and then get Julian Edelman in four picks. Right. And that's what happened. We got Cameron Meredith, and then four run, four running backs in a row go off which is exactly why you know we don't want to be picking these backs. Right. That's one reason why we hammered the backs we did because we don't want to be worrying about if Samaj P. Ryan's going to be in there. We don't want to worry about if Chris Carson is going to beat out Rashad Penny. You know, we we got Cameron Meredith which is a favorite of ours, followed him up with Julian Edelman. Yeah. You get to take a shot on uh on Cameron Meredith and he's a uber athletic guy, big big guy can kind of play all the positions for the Saints. They're desperate Love for, Cam I think, an, a second receiver over there. I'll take anybody in the Saints offense that I can get a piece of. Right. Cameron Meredith's really cheap, right? Next year, he could be five, six rounds up from here. No He's doubt just coming it. off of an injury, which turned out to really not be that bad of an injury. And I, I love the upside with Cam. We're going to just draft a bunch of upside sure. receivers here. And then, like Big Co said, we go four picks later, and we wanted Edelman the whole time. Who's just a PPR machine? Every time he's out there, Tommy's gonna. He just lost his appeal for the four games, so he's taking those four games. But after those four games, he's pretty sure to, to lock in to, to get you, you know, 10, 12 points a game at, at the least here. I'm now. I have seen. I think Jacob Roderick, Rick Road, Rick Road. I do that every time, every single time. I, you know, even if you don't like the some of the things that he says and what, like, he always backs it up with. Who, also, Rick Road? Oh, yeah. He always Most backs of the time it I like a, a, No, I do, too. Get, I, we got a lot of same views. No, like nobody's going to have your views Perfectly. 100% of yeah. the time. And when he does say the stuff that you don't like or, or agree with, he always at least has some good philosophy to back it up sure. with. And he was talking about how, you know, 
Amendola, I believe it was, was 32 when they got rid of him, and the numbers were similar for uh, Edelman and, and um, Amendola when they got rid of him, and they just signed Jordan Matthews, and basically they were saying that Edelman's out and Jordan Matthews is going to be the slot guy there. Yeah. So maybe that does happen, but I, in, the, in the 13th round or 12th round, I will take my chance Absolutely. on getting a PPR, who's been a PPR machine. Him and Tommy are boys. boys. Well, Ed, there's yeah, Edelman is like... Um, good, Am- good. He, Am- I'm glad he was on PEDs. Am- good for him. Yeah, I mean, he's going to get a solid back half of the season. <laughs> he's ready to I go. completely. I couldn't be happier that he got suspended. <laughs> don't, it makes need him, him, don't need him for those four for first four games. You need him for the last four. Right. Don't need him for the first four. His suspension might bump him down a round or two more. Makes him even cheaper. Cheaper for my philosophy in a startup this year. And cheaper. yeah, and and he went and got the Kobe Bryant treatment. And you know, he's going back come back in here with a good knee. I love that. And like Amendola, stem cell. I love. Hopefully. I, I love Amendola, but like there's a- Amendola and Brady were never Edelman and Brady. Yeah, I, maybe even. I quoted the wrong guy, but yeah, it was. But, and no, I get you. And and just a quick little spot there. I love that. Like yeah, when you disagree with what Jacob Rickroad says, he always backs it up with something good. It's not one of those guys that just spits out something that oh, might well, you know, regression with, with no with no stats yeah. or no philosophy to back it up. At least everything he puts out there, it's got another regression. paragraph underneath it with something yeah. that backs it up. I Do like you guys, that. Does part. anybody know what his Twitter handle is? Um, no, but he's got the polar bear on the yeah. little ice cap. Well, we'll find it. And, and if, if you're you not following him, Jacob Rickard, you should be you following should be. him. He's, he's good. So I, I like, but one more thing about Cameron Meredith, like at clutch fantasy. Sounds about right. At Dude's clutch good. fantasy. Hit him if, up. If, if, if something were to be were to happen to Michael Thomas, Cameron Meredith is would just move right over. Sure. Like I'm not saying Cameron Meredith is Michael Thomas because no. he's not. But before the ankle, before the knee injury last year, Cameron Meredith the year before that was ridiculous. Jay Wayne loved him and he gave us a lot of good reasons why. Cameron Meredith is a really good football player. And if something were to happen to Michael Thomas, you just got yourself at least a wide receiver two. He might be a high, low end wide receiver two the way he stands right. with Michael Thomas on the field. That's what I like about like, him. The I, upside is awesome. The, the upside is ridiculous. And I think the I think you you're just gonna plug him in to a Saints offense that's ridiculously good. And if you think about it, like how I mean, yeah, they had the two running backs and they they had Michael Thomas, but they where they're they're dying for a good quality number two. Sure. You know, they really are. And something happened last year with Willie Sneed and he's out and they the coaches said you you know, you're not hearing it. There's something happened bad and they didn't they all of a, they all of a sudden hated Willie Sneed. Cameron Meredith is a They fan, went and got him. They they fantastic pickup. They had to for the snipe Saints. him off somebody else's team. The Bears and pay they went him, and yeah. took him t- took him from the Bears and the like, understand. "Oh, you're not going to pay this guy? Come on over here, Bubba." Right. They tent they we the, got you. the Bears made a mistake and they should have matched the offer and they didn't and Cameron Meredith is a saint and I mean, yeah. I think we're going to use that He's to a hit, saint. bolster bolster our, you know, startup team here, you know. Again, we would have taken Edelman on the PPR floor. But we didn't have to. We got him. We doubled Figured down we and got him, him in back. Four picks. Yeah. So uh, to recap, at eleven ten we get Cam Meredith, to, and then twelve three we go Edelman, um, and then thirteen ten Brita goes right in front of us, which kind of jabs us in the rib a little. I don't think that that's super realistic. I don't know if anybody's taking Brita in the thirteenth round. I think the algorithm I, got mad at us yeah, for taking all these <laughs> running backs. I think we had. I think run the, the cover dry there. There was there was a vote in the league, and they were like, "These guys, we can't let them get Brita." So yeah. as as we were looking at the list of guys that's on Fantasy Pros, Latavius Murray was uh, high up on the checked the off very guys, next running back, and he was taken, there I was think. a bunch of gray around him, and he was the only blue name there. Um, so we end up taking our handcuff there because we didn't want to miss out on him because we've already sung his praises in the first episode right. there about how we d- there's probably a drop off when there's definitely a drop off if Dalvin Cook goes out. But you see, you saw enough from Latavius Murray to know that you could get 12 to 15 points a week out of him if Dalvin Cook goes yeah. down. So you got to have him if you have Cook, I think. You, you got to. Absolutely. If you got Cook, you got to go get Latavius. And, and right. Big Co said it in the first episode. If, it, if you got to reach around higher than you normally would, do it because especially on plug the capable guy. handcuffs that you know right okay you don't have to stab around this is basically right. that, that this isn't like oh he might be the handcuff maybe he's not and this the investment like you, and the investment you make in cook as a second rounder you know it's it is pick two three like when you take cook there it's not like you're you know yet back I mean, we up, just backed up lamar miller if, but if still well yeah but, but he, he could be the guy next year though yeah like yeah he could be, we could have two starting running backs next year out of having lamar and dante so he's got some more than just cuff kind of that's true value that's true but the, yeah but the the investment you put in cook 
You br- and, and with the injury concerns, concerns, obviously, you know, Cook's coming back from the knee, but he has had the shoulder issues and stuff. So we take the high upside, ridiculously awesome pick in Dalvin Cook, but then a really, really safe pick in round 13, throw Latavius Murray on our team, and then we go right back to wide receivers. Right. So at 14-3, a guy that we had debated basically since 11-10, mm-hmm. Kenny Stills is still hanging around. So yep. we, we snag him with no hesitation. Right, because we might need to play him. Right. I mean, this is Jar- yeah. Jarvis is gone and we talked about it a little bit with Drake, but there's a ton of target vacancy there. And he's been a guy with Tannehill who has connected well and, and played and had well. And you were Cutler. Right. He was a back end wide receiver, too, last year. Yeah. yeah. Because, I mean, this is not news that why Kenny Steele's drum is starting to get really, you know, pounded on and everybody's loving Kenny Steele's. And it's just like until there's a market correction. He is one of those players that gives you more reason. Like Julian Edelman is not young. Cameron Meredith is young. not, you know, young. not not gonna sneak up into this all of a sudden, get inside the top ten rounds. Like you that's what we were saying earlier in the draft. We were like, just wait, just wait for us to get through these running backs and explain to you why we can live with this philosophy. Because now we got Cameron Meredith, Julian Edelman, and now we get Kenny Stills in the fourteenth round. Like, sure. In a you know in two three months like Kenny Stills you might have to take him in the eleventh yeah. but that's fine you still get paid back on that right that's fine no Absolutely. I think it's a great it's a great shot um and we we basically they basically gave him to us <laughs> yeah for free three so I'll I'll take that all day long right then then a an, uh, sixteen picks go off the board or whatever how many actually is that well either way we're it's at fifteen 12. ten so. So yeah. it's a big, you know, we pick back to back, and then we got to wait right. a long while. So, so next fifteenth round, at the fifteenth round, the 18, tenth, 18 players. The fifteenth round, the tenth pick. This math is hard. Nine and nine makes eighteen. Anyway, so we come right back and sticking with our philosophy of hammering wide receivers, we get Rashard Matthews again, who could be who's perennially disrespected. Who's been a Great wide At receiver, too, for your team. At worst and we wide love the outlook of the uh, Tennessee Titans and, That's and what their new offensive coordinator is going to come in here and do. If you haven't listened to the episode of the Christian McCaffrey and the Titans talk, the go Derrick back and Henry. listen to that, and that'll explain the love that we have for where we think this offense is going next year. And then Rashard Matthews has been good without what we think the creativity of this offensive coordinator is going to bring in here. And I think he could just be... Very solid again, and even elevated. Right. Well, here. so at fifteen ten, I think Rashard Matthews was a no brainer for us as well. I saw a stat the other day, and it said, uh, you know, it gave basically gave you Rashard Matthews last two years average together, talking about how good he was. But basically, there is his twenty sixteen was ridiculous, and the twenty seventeen everything for the Tennessee Titans was down. So like we all expect, yes, we got it. There's a you know full podcast out there about how the Titans and the offensive, you know, the new coach and staff and the new offensive coordinator and all that good stuff. Like the Rashard Matthews of two years ago, I think could re- it could be that number, not just the average of the down year and the good year. Right. I think that good year could come right back around. Obviously, Corey Davis is a monster, and now they got Deion Lewis with to catch some balls and Delaney Walker's again underappreciated coming into this year, but like. You're bringing in the LaFleur, the LaFleur McVay system here, which is basically what they want to do is hit an open man. And if you got Corey Davis, he needs to be double teamed because he's a monster. Delaney Walker is going to kill you with mismatches sure. against linebackers that are slower than he, even though he's 34 years old, he's a physical beast. Young and now, 34. Young thirty four exactly didn't play a lot. Of and first now, years now they here, got right? the they got to ground it, but they got the they got the Derrick Henry. They can pound you up the middle with Derrick Henry, and they got Deion Lewis, who's going to be just going to be that space mismatch back. And I think Rashard Matthews is the guy that's going to be basically in open that, in that Robert Woods role yeah. of hey, he's wide open, throw him the ball. Yeah. And I just think Rashard Matthews is in for extremely efficient season with just getting wide open passes and. and he's, He's a good ad libber. Ad libber. He's good down the field to lay out to make a ball. Him Great and Mary Oder on the same. He's page. an NFL receiver. He's a solid yeah. NFL receiver. So give give me him in the fifteenth round all day long. Right. We're just looking for wide receivers basically that we can put in our lineup if need be. Right. And there's st- we're not going to go through and we were listing off the players that we could have taken and all that kind of stuff in in the previous rounds. But we're a little later in this thing, so we're now we're just telling you which guys we took and and kind of the reasons why. Yeah, just putting our team together. Yeah, and again, if you guys want to see the the mock draft board, just go under our website under the more. There should be there'll be draft boards um, that you can look at, and you'll be able to see what, all the picks we made from this ten spot, just so you can kind of follow along. 
a little easier if yeah, you want to. If you're wondering. And you can see the picks, the guys maybe we didn't choose in these back half picks here. Yeah, and then when you see a pick in the 14th round and you're like, oh, well, you could have had this guy. You don't know how it's going to work until you already make the picks. You know, the yeah. whole hindsight 2020. We covered that with Robert Woods. Yeah, for All sure. Right. All right, well, so let's move on to this next pick. We just took Rashard Matthews. We got to, let's see, is this, we got to wait for a little while. No, this is a, this is a quick turn. This is 15-10. We got four to go off, and then we get 16-3. All right, so four guys go off, and then we're back up. We hit another wide receiver. We hit a wide receiver with uh, a ton of, I think, a ton of upside. He's got, he's not super young for being just getting recognized as this year. He's a little bit older, um, but we take Keelan Cole here with sixteen three, just a kind of guy with a, a, a tremendous amount of upside, um, where there's big playability, and he flashed for a large chunk of a season last year, especially near the end. Um, so that. We just kind of took a stab here. We don't need Keelan Cole for anything right now. We've taken our chances on guys that we know we want to start. We're going to be starting three running backs, two receivers, pretty much probably four running backs every week. And when Julian Edelman's back, maybe he slides into that second right. flex. We'd, uh, that's that's the, the way we drafted this team. We'll have options for our starting running back. I mean, starting lineup for sure. And, I mean, uh, if we could start three or four running backs every week, the consistency of starting good running backs every week, not – you know dice rolls every week i think we'd be in really good shape but i think the thing like jacksonville receivers as a whole does not make me excited no it's a little but messy. to get keelan cole in the 16th and the things that he showed us last year and he's i mean just turned 25 like you say he's a little older but he just i mean in april he turned 25 in april so it's not like he's it's old you know, rookie though i mean you know you know a lot of people go to college for seven years <laughs> Yeah, true. Called doctors. But dude dude played really, really, really solid last year on a team that, you know, for most of the part struggled through the air until the very end of the year when, you know, Blake got Blake his swagger. Was starting to get his swagger back. So go and, look at that Keelan Cole highlight tape. Yeah. You'd be like impressed with both him and Blake Bortles. Keelan Cole is a guy that you want to target late in your draft, sixteenth round. He he could do some damage. He accelerator. If you know, even, I mean, even at this point, waiting as long as we did to get wide receivers, we already got six of them. You know, so he's our seventh wide receiver. And with, like you said, Casey, with Julian Edelman on our team, now we got Kenny Stills and Rashard Matthews. That those names don't blow you away, but it wouldn't shock anybody if Kenny Stills was a, you know, he was a back end wide receiver too last year. All the targets could leave. be at the top of Kenny the wide Stills, receiver two food chain. Kenny this Stills year. could be that. Yeah, some people are even saying, what you know, watch my extreme breakout. Kenny Stills going to be a back end wide receiver one. Like Kenny Stills could be in our lineup every week. Rashard Matthews probably going to be looks, you know, a potentially a wide, you know, a wide receiver that we could plug in our flex if we need to every week. Like we don't need Keelan Cole, like you said, but. You don't want to miss the boat if the boat if he's sitting around this year. I, I mean, this late in the draft this year. Like, I'm not going to say go up and re, you know go reach for Keelan Cole just because that whole wide receiver core over there is super crowded and they want to run first, all that good stuff. They're going to have a good defense again. They're definitely not going to be down by 20 points every week like the old school Jaguars. Right. So it's not like they're going to be airing it out all over the place. But Keelan Cole. Def and even just making this pick, we were kind of back and forth on who we could take here between Keelan Cole and maybe like a Tyrell Williams. And you guys, you know, you know held me down and made me watch the Keelan Cole highlight tape. And it's like, dude, it's, <laughs> it's no, no denying how explosive and the game log looks He's pretty like, sexy in spots. And oh you, yeah. But the if last you, four games or the four out of the last five games, if you obviously we've said this before, like highlight tapes are funny because they're highlight tapes. They don't right. show the bad plays, but if you watch inside of a good play is things that might've been, you know, yeah, every once in a while, a deep bomb is a deep bomb. But if you pay attention and you watch the Keelan Cole highlight tapes and you find that one or two plays where you're like, wait a minute, watch that again, back it up, watch that again, the same up. play, same, watch the same play four or five times in a row. And you see little things like Keelan Cole, he looks to me like a really legit NFL wide receiver. He, he certainly does. And I mean, uh, Who's the guy from Indianapolis? Moncrief just came over. Is that just a one-year deal? Yeah, but it's nine him? million dollars. Sure, there's no I doubt mean, I'm about not, it. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not saying anything about this year. Maybe sure. Moncrief does, you know, get on the field and stay on the field, and it is the guy, and it hurts Keelan Cole a little bit because they still do have D.D. Westbrook over there, who also looked good in his own right. Absolutely. So they have a bunch of things going on, but I mean, after this year, maybe they maybe, got D.J. Chark. Now oh, D.J. Chark, I'm all set. I'm all I don't need good. to spend my time talking about him. <laughs> But, but yeah, mean, Keelan Cole's a kicks. guy that's going to, I mean, a 16th round, at this point, they're all shots. He could work his way onto the field and be a staple that can't come off the field this year, or he could be, we took a, we don't need him right now, and he could be a player that we're waiting for down the line Completely here. Completely agree. 
some good ingested some, youth. Some, into some this. good youth. Right. So the next pick is seventeen ten, and we're gonna kind of do the same thing we just did with Keelan Cole, except this guy probably has a quicker path to being on the field nonstop with Seattle. We took Tyler Lockett at seventeen, and we've talked about Tyler Lockett before. He was a guy who had a big fan club, and there was people. Uh, Matt Harmon was t- you know touting him as possibly being the next Antonio Brown and doing all this other stuff. Yeah, and it didn't quite work out. He had a terrible injury and never never quite panned out to where it was, but. He's going to get a chance this year. They don't have a ton of competition over there. And there was he had spots on the field last year where he looked good. And, you know, I don't this is a one of my favorite shots to take at the end of a draft. The fanfare right. was hot and heavy. Like I said, he had a big fan club. It's not going to take long for him to make one or two big plays and people see it and they'll be right back on that Tyler Lockett train. And oh, see, this I is told you, Tyler the area where we got guys <laughs> like Bobby Woods and Devontae Adams when people weren't into him anymore yeah, exactly. because they had flamed out. All of a sudden, this guy could be. 10 rounds exactly. it could, up the board. Uh, couldn't have said it better because I really wasn't going to say that. And I'm, uh, you're right. This is exactly where we took, you know. This is exactly where we took Devontae Adams, round 17 a couple years ago after yeah. he was left for dead. And Tyler Lockett coming back from a just horrible knee injury was on the field last year. And that's pretty much all you could ask out right. of him. He wasn't the same guy, but he started looking better towards the end of the season. Wasn't ever 100%. And maybe he's not ever Tyler Lockett again, but if he gets back to 90, 95% of what Tyler Lockett was coming out, just like you and Jay Wayne said, like he had a ton of fanfare and he was one of my favorite, play, favorite receivers coming out. And there's hardly other than Doug Baldwin, there's zero competition for cart targets. Right. And I've seen some people say like Amara Darbo. And it's just like, they br- if you're they bring, bring in dude, uh, Brandon Marshall, but uh, well, Brandon Marshall's he's, he's basically in the commentator booth already. And like, <laughs> I, like if you don't think that Tyler Lockett is going to get every opportunity and yeah, may, maybe he's, maybe he's not, maybe he's not fully healthy and he's never going to be healthy in next year or this coming season, two or three weeks into the season, He's getting zero love, and you can yeah. move on. Like on a you, smaller bench, you can cut him and move on. On a deeper bench, you can stash put him, him in the further back. down there. Put him at, stash him at the back. So yeah, I, this is a absolute huge upside. Zero, like you, you're not going to lose anything by taking him in the seventeenth round. You know, like you, I think it's a a great great pick because he he could be out there getting you know wide receiver. He could be your wide receiver three in no time, for sure. I like it. All right, well, we're going to wrap this thing up with the last pick of the draft. And if you've been taking notes or keeping tabs, we don't have a quarterback yet. Haven't we, even talked about we one fiercely, since Deshaun. We fiercely debated a little bit of Deshaun and at pick 6-3 or, or 6-10. I don't remember which one it was. Um, so this is the reason why we don't take quarterbacks. Ben Roethlisberger was still on the board in the 18th round, and Alex Smith still on the board in the 18th round. We took Smith over Roethlisberger. I mean, just personal preference. I, I personally like Alex Smith. I think he's going to be just fine in Washington. Some people don't. Some people think it's a, that he's not any good, and he's going to you know, not be great in Washington. I, I disagree heavily. I think Alex Smith is he's a gamer. <laughs> he's going to compete. <laughs> Well, like the, the, the key quarterback here, quarterback three last year. The key, it, well, yes, is nuts. Yes, that or on him, whatever. And <laughs> the key here is that Ben Roethlisberger still on the board. And again, like I've said, like Philip Rivers went in the sixteenth round, and he's that guy's second quarterback. You know, Idiot. like every single team on the every, girl. pretty every single team in this startup has two quarterbacks, and we just took Alex Smith. We right, just and Big one. Ben is still out there. You know, and so like there's no there's no chance that we can't get a running a quarterback. in the, you know, for pennies on the dollar, once this thing starts moving around, we can get it. We can go if Philip if we need Philip Rivers, we can go get him for a third round pick. You know, like. I'm just going to continue taking all those shots before I need to invest in Alex Smith or Big Ben. And I can't argue if you want to take Big Ben, it was just a we don't know how long he's going to play, and Alex Smith is is not about to retire. Rolling into so. his prime. So yeah, and it, depending on how I feel, like I don't, I got no problem taking Big Ben because I mean he's got obviously he's got better weapons. He's in, in this, you know, in there with Antonio Knows Brown, everybody. And it's Le'Veon familiar. Bell. Nothing's changed. Alex Smith just made a change. Obviously, I got no problem taking Big Ben, but Alex Smith to me feels safer, and you know he he does run around and he's a got a little he, bit. He'll give you that floor. He doesn't have that game to game upside that Big Ben does, especially going away from all those weapons that he had in in um uh. Chiefs, you know, in Kansas City, uh, you know, that Big Ben, he, Big Ben's got weapons, you know, better than the Redskins. But Big Ben, the home and away splits are for real. Like, for some reason on the road, it's like a completely different quarterback. Oh, and, maybe I don't have any more. And he's not. He, it, old, Big ben, ben? old Big Ben would have would have done some things with his legs. But, you know, Alex Smith runs around enough and he'll keep you. He's not. Alex Smith's not going to give you an eight-point game, you know. Right. And Big Ben will. 
Hey, Big Ben will give you a nice game, and then he'll give you a crap game. And Alex Smith, at least he's you know consistent. Fairly consistent, normally. Normally good. Last All year, right. really well, good. Uh, on the videos that we do from different draft spots, we'll be doing deeper drafts. But here, we just decided since we don't need to go that deep in this thing. Obviously, there's a bunch more guys that you can make a living off of and, and make money off of here in the back half of the draft. And we'll get to those in some of those videos. But for now, we just went 18 rounds just to give you an idea of what it's going to be like and what we're doing drafting from the 10 spot. And this is a great exercise. It's a lot of fun and it's something you should definitely do because you you learn when you do and do, don't need to take guys. Yeah. You see how it unfolds and, and mock it up before you fuck it up. Well, you got to. Well, again, every draft is different, but every time you do a practice round like this, you get that spot where, you know, a player, you, you take a player and then the player you're really looking at goes because you thought he'd be there. And when he disappears, you get that burning in your stomach. Yeah. And like a mock draft is, is, practicey as it is it can help you redefine your rankings right. like it help and help you move one player especially like it's it's rankings are hard enough as it is to just be inside the wide receivers or just be inside the running backs while you're ranking them it's hard enough right. to really make a decision without being on the clock but when, even though it's a mock draft when you're on the clock and you're like oh you know i'm gonna take this guy and i'm pretty sure this guy will be back here when it, when i get back around well, when that guy goes and your stomach burns and you're like, well, I would switch, I would swap him if I have to. Right. So lesson now, learned and you now know, you learn you know which lesson. one your plums exactly. like. Now you know which one your mm -hmm. gut needs mm -hmm. to have on your team. Hey, can I get some of them plums? <laughs> I can feel it all the way down in my plums. I can feel it down in my plums. Just double down, huh? <laughs> I can't decide which one I like better. I got both. We should get the whole cut up and give it to him next week. Hey. <laughs> that plum looks good. You, can I trade it for your Twinkie? No, these are my plums. <laughs> <laughs> what a wonderful way to close up shop. Jay Wayne, it. get us out of here. All right, let's let's uh, let's get the hell out of here. Thanks for, uh, or the FF out of here? How, how's that work? Huh? Solid. Let's get the FF out of here. Thanks for listening, everyone. Find us on Twitter at the FF Dynasty. We have individual handles at IMC Myers, at Dynasty Big Co, at Jay Wayne's World. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you're on iTunes, Please hit those reviews and give us a little five stars. It would greatly be appreciated. Thanks to anyone that's already done that um, a lot. Thank you so much. It really helps us out. If you're listening on YouTube, please hit subscribe. Um, we're on all your platforms of choice, Podbean, Google Play, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio. Not on Spotify yet. We're working on that one. Working on that one. Just got to submit it. You could do that. You could do it. I could. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Till next time, you've been listening to the FF Dynasties Married to the Game.